Welcome back to another spoiler-free anime review. Heike Monogatari roughly depicts one of Japan's most famous wars, the Ginpei War from the 13th century. As usual, in these reviews, my singular focus is on an anime's enjoyability. If you're looking for a historical analysis, that's not what I do here. Although I am interested in ancient Japanese history, most of my knowledge pertains to the Warring States period, which wouldn't occur for another 350 years. I begin with this disclaimer because you will probably be lost unless you grew up in Japan or studied its ancient history. I'm not saying this is a form of pretentious gatekeeping, they just don't give you enough information considering its target audience is Japanese people who learn these events in school. I consider it a loose historical reference piece first, a visual spectacle second, and a story third. It's just impossible to tell such a complex story over 11 episodes. In fact, the novel it's based on ranges between 800 and 1000 pages depending on your version. In most anime, 11 episodes is barely enough time time to tell one character's story, yet the anime focuses on about 10. While there's not enough time to characterize and develop everyone in a traditional manner, characterization is certainly there through the use of hyper-expressive mannerisms which complement the anime's cute overtone, which I'm personally biased against for this type of story. Heiko Monogatari spends several years causing characters to age and some to die, most without forming a bond with a viewer, at least in my experience. Exposition is another aspect that suffered due to the anime's impossible possibly short runtime. Characters give direct exposition back and forth despite it being redundant considering the context of their foreknowledge. Other explanations were less bothersome as they were left vague, yet I still scratch my head wondering why as the anime's primary concern is the what and the how. Although the anime is primarily a historical reference piece, it does have a central character. Biwa is a young girl with different colored magical eyes capable of looking into the future. She's more of a looking glass character than an actual protagonist with goals. Her unique abilities provide the foreshadowing of certain characters' impending doom. Her name is a double entendre. On one hand, she plays the Biwa and was never given a name. On the other hand, Biwa players often sang tales of these eras as she's a living reference to that. While I understand Biwa's reference to the origin of this story, I think she's consuming a significant amount of precious screen time that should have been used to develop more historically relevant characters. I initially thought this was a strange directorial choice. However, I quickly understood why upon realizing it was directed by now. Ko Yamada, director of K-On! and Hibiki Euphorium. Though I can't comment on her skills as a director since I haven't seen those anime, I feel like this was a case of the source material being warped to the shape of a director's vision. However, I will say this anime piqued my interest in watching those two as I appreciated her directorial style on a per-scene basis despite not caring for the work as a whole. Furthermore, its animation director was Takashi Kojima, known for Death Parade and Flip Flappers, two anime I also also haven't seen yet, but I'm now curious about due to Heike's artistic achievements. I think Heike's presentation was its most substantial accomplishment because the art conveys more culture and beauty than its plot. From the architecture to clothing and even their hobbies, the anime was rich with detail and its camera angles and environmental impact accented the emotion of each scene. It's easily one of the better looking anime from the past decade, though I wish it were less silly. I think the staff did an outstanding job with what little time they had. Personally, I think the story should have been 50 to 100 episodes divided into 6 to 12 episode arcs focusing on the dramatized perspectives of historically relevant characters with limited scope. Unfortunately, some producer somewhere decided such a complex story was suitable for 11 episodes. Did they think no one would watch it if it were longer? I mean, Kingdom just finished its third season and is gearing up for its fourth in 2022. There's clearly an audience. Overall, I found Heike Monogatari to be an anime I appreciate for what it represents more than what it actually is. I can only hope that it sparks an interest in more serious, long-form anime set in ancient Japan. I give it a 7 out of 10. Although its art is consistently jaw-dropping, beautiful art alone can pull the slack of a story of this magnitude crammed into a episodes. However, I predict the anime will attract a cult following of those familiar with its history as there's literally no long format alternative yet in anime. Needless to say, I recommend checking out Heike Monogatari because it is absolutely beautiful, but I can't recommend it unless you consume at least an hour's worth of history lessons beforehand. Honestly, I think I would have enjoyed the anime a little bit more if I had done the same because they really fire a lot of names and 
faces and a lot of details about things that just don't have enough context for you to paint the bigger picture unless you were to do a little bit of research before actually watching the anime. Unfortunately, the most in-depth video I can find on this topic on YouTube was about 17 minutes long, but I did buy the big beefy novel that this is based on on Amazon so that I can read that, because this really did pique my interest. I just wish there was more time and more information in between the gaps here. If you're looking for more Heian era anime, Otogi Zoshi is a 24 episode series that I'll be reviewing sometime soon, and I think yesterday's Anjuto Zushimaru was also set during this period. There's also Kaido Maru, a 45 minute OVA which I'll probably be reviewing soon as well. So if you know of any more anime set during the Heian period, let me know in the comments section below. So what did you think of Heike Monogatari? Thanks to Nia-chan for a third tier Patreon support, and to all of those who support these videos through Patreon or buying anime from affiliate links in the video description. Thanks for watching, I'll see you tomorrow with Tonari no Seki-kun.